Honda was an ugly, disgusting, worthless loser who lived his life believing he was hated by everyone around him, even though he was actually admired by every useless moron in his class. When he opened his locker that day, he saw a letter that fell from the inside, but the dumbass thought it was one of the death threats he used to receive in middle school, so he crumpled it and threw it into the trash. Turning back to leave, Honda was confronted by an ugly girl with a big ass head named Jerry who called him a jerk for throwing away the love letter that her friend Mako had stayed up all night just to write. He didn't listen to what she said though, because he was so sure that Minecraft Head wanted to fight him, and with nowhere else to go, Honda asked the dumbass bitches to say what the fuck they wanted from him. But to his surprise, Mako said that he should meet her behind the gym after school, and Honda began to think of all of the possible ways that he could get his ass kicked by the end of the day. He decided to free his mind by doing some artwork in class, but when the teacher noticed this, he called Honda to the front and told him to solve the complex math equation on the board. Because he was a natural badass in this world, Honda wrote down the answer with his paintbrush without even thinking, and he went back to his seat to think of how to reply to Mako and her oversized bodyguard. Jury caught him staring at her and she immediately thought that he wanted her to give him some Gok Gok 3000 with her massive head, but she couldn't imagine ruining her friendship with Mako just because of a guy. However, when Honda dropped a letter on her desk without saying a word, Jury's body began to glow, and she started freaking out because she thought that Honda was in love with her instead. Later that afternoon, Mako walked over to their class to eat lunch with Jury, but when she started bragging about how she was the prettiest girl in school, Jury decided that she was going to steal Honda away from her. The school period was almost over and Honda was freaking out because he still hadn't thought of a way to face Mako, and he wondered if he could just avoid the whole situation by running away. But with everyone standing behind the gym waiting for him to show, Honda grabbed his bag and walked outside like a boss to meet the two ladies that he had no idea were madly in love with him. Asking them what the meeting was all about, Jury told him to stop playing dumb and Mako walked closer to give Honda another love letter but Jury immediately smacked the paper from her hands. She lied saying that it was an accident, but Jury kept on doing the same thing over and over again until she held Mako in a chokehold while Honda watched the both of them in confusion. She told Honda to stay away from Mako because the bitch was just a cutie with a black heart, and Jury also said that she didn't deserve him because her head was shaped like a building block. However, Honda didn't understand what the fuck she was saying, so Jury pinned Mako to the ground and started humping her in different positions to show him how painful it would be if they developed plot with each other. She told him to forget them and move on with his life, and because Honda was already fed up with their stupid cat fight, he just turned around and walked away like nothing ever happened. But before he left, Honda told the girls to cherish their friendship over other things and when Mako tried forcing him to read her letter, he told her to write to Santa instead for a bigger cup size. Yo, that one there was a violation, personally I wouldn't have it. Mako just stayed there crying until it was almost dark, and because she didn't like seeing her friend like this, Jury said that they should work together to make a love letter that Honda couldn't resist. The next day at school, the teacher told everyone that it was time for them to vote for a new class rep, and because he had held the position for the last 10 years, Aizawa was very sure that he would win again. But because of his sudden popularity Honda was also nominated for the position this time around, and Aizawa wondered what Mr. Heartbreaker could possibly gain from trying to take the title away from him. However, Honda felt like his classmates were only trying to make his life miserable by nominating him for the position, but he secretly went along with it in the hopes that Aizawa would defeat him. When the votes were counted, the teacher noticed that Aizawa and Honda both had the same number, so he suggested that they break the tie with a simple game of rock-paper-scissors. Aizawa was pissed that he was willing to make such an important decision using a childish game, but when the rest of the class said that they were okay with it, Aizawa agreed to settle the score once and for all. Because he wanted him to win, Honda told Aizawa that he was going to throw rock each time. And while everyone was shocked by this move, Aizawa wondered if Honda was really telling the truth or just trying to manipulate him. He decided to forget what Honda said, but Aizawa lost the first round and so he begged the teacher like a sad little baby for another chance, after which he won the second round against Honda. The guys were tied with one point each and all Aizawa had to do was throw paper in the last round to win. But the dumb bat started thinking about all the different outcomes of the game. He decided to trust his mind again, and so Honda defeated him without even trying. But Honda was convinced that Aizawa had tricked him into taking the crappy position away from him. And with no other choice left, Honda said that he was going to step down from being the class rep because he had other important things to do. But Aizawa stopped him saying that he couldn't just quit like that. 
Honda told him to get a life before walking out of the classroom. And although everyone felt like he was being rude, Aizawa stood up for Honda saying that his actions had just taught him the true meaning of leadership. Because of this, Aizawa decided to give the title back to Honda. But when Honda came back and saw his name on the chalkboard, he got so angry thinking that all of his classmates hated him. However, Aizawa said that he was the one who had stepped down for him instead, and he told him not to worry because he was willing to do all the work despite not being the class rep. Meanwhile, just outside of class, all the girls were going crazy over a new student named Ryo who was a handsome teen model with long hair, glass skin and an attractive smile. Ryo had a reputation of being the hottest guy in school until Honda suddenly became more popular, and so he was forced to share his fanbase with a creepy loner that had no fashion sense. Ryo asked the girls who was hotter between Honda and him, and although they told him that he had a prettier face, the ladies said that Honda was more attractive because of his mysterious and gentle nature. Pissed off by their words, Ryo decided to follow Honda around all day to find out what made him so special. But all he was able to discover was that Honda had a weird obsession with street cats. He followed him to a local market where modeling agents were secretly on the lookout for new talents. And because Ryo didn't want Honda to steal his job, he rushed forward to stop the agents from recruiting him. However, one of the fashion scouts slapped him in the face before walking up to give Honda a jacket saying that if he signed a modeling contract with him he would become the most popular person on the planet. But Honda was creeped out by his ditty vibe so he took the jacket and wrapped it around Ryo instead, saying that poor and homeless street boys also deserve to wear fancy clothes. Honda walked away, but Ryo felt something change inside him that day, so he decided to quit his job as a model and follow in the footsteps of the man that taught him how to live a selfless life. The next morning, Aizawa gave Honda a package to deliver to a student named Akane who had been absent from school for the past year, and Honda wondered what could make such a nice-looking guy skip school. When he got to the apartment Honda knocked on the door and nobody answered, so he decided to drop the package and leave. But then a huge guy suddenly appeared asking him what the hell he was looking for. Honda said that he didn't want any trouble and that he was only here to deliver a package for Akane. But Honda was shocked out of his mind when the fat bouncer told him that he was actually Akane. Surprised that the cute little boy in the picture had turned into a giant monster overnight, Akane decided to tell Honda the story of how he was always bullied in school because of his girly face. None of the guys wanted to hang out with him, and all of the girls hated him because he was prettier than them. So Akane was forced to quit school and stay locked up in his room forever. But after watching a commercial on TV about bodybuilding, Akane decided to exercise his muscles every day until he became a buff guy that was strong enough to beat up all the gang leaders in his neighborhood. Now that he was an undefeated champion feared by everyone around, Akane no longer needed to attend school, and he told Honda to give up because not even the cops could make him go back. However, Honda didn't give a shit about what he was saying and he just handed him the package, but Akane took it the wrong way, and he thought that Honda was challenging him to a battle. He watched his opponent closely to make sure that he didn't land a surprise attack on him. But before Akane could swing his weapon at Honda, they were suddenly ambushed by a group of street thugs. Honda gave him the package before walking away. But for some reason Akane thought that he was going to fight by his side instead. And he started beating up the punks while fantasizing that Honda was helping him out. One of the thugs tried to stop Honda from leaving. But when he looked into his vampire eyes the guy was forced to let him go and the others realized that he was the notorious Honda that they've heard so much about. Not wanting to start a beef with Honda, the thugs quickly ran away instead, and when Akane opened the package he realized that Honda had risked his life just to encourage him to come back to school. So the next morning, Extra Large finally came back to school, and while Aizawa was still struggling to understand how he became this big, Akane silently swore to himself that he would always be there to protect Honda. Later that day everyone gathered for a practical cooking class, and Kondo, the most average guy in school, was scared to death when he realized that he was in the same group with Honda and a bunch of other freaks. Aizawa and the guys agreed to do all the work so that Honda could sit back and relax like a king. But Kondo noticed the troubled look on his face, and he wondered if that was truly what Honda wanted. They got started with the fancy recipe but while everyone was trying to help out in one way or the other, Kondo noticed that Honda was busy making pudding cups using the worst possible ingredients ever. Akane started taking his anger out on the other guys, but before any of them knew what was happening, Honda unleashed Hell's Inferno right in the kitchen while trying to make some fries. The head chef told all the students to leave the room before they got hurt. But while Aizawa and the others were concerned about Honda's safety, Kondo grabbed a fire extinguisher 
and quickly put out the flames. The guys believed that Honda had started the fire on purpose to stop from fighting each other, and they opened up the fridge to grab the pudding cups that Honda had made specially for them. Kondo tried stopping the fools from eating Honda's desserts of doom, but even though the taste was clearly unbearable, Aizawa and the others kept on eating because they knew that whatever Honda made was perfect. Later that day, a girl sitting next to Honda didn't notice when her eraser rolled away and landed under Honda's desk. But because he was so scared of returning it back Honda just gave her a new eraser instead. However, this simple act of kindness made the girl Miyoko fall madly in love with him. And after he was done with class for that day Honda met up with his friend Kawafuji to do some shopping. He was trying to buy papers for his next artwork when a couple of girls walked into the store. And because Honda didn't want them to know that he was friends with Kawafuji, he quickly hid himself between the shelves. After the girls were gone, Honda told Kawafuji that it would be bad for his reputation if people knew that he was friends with the most hated guy in school. But Kawafuji wondered what in the world he was talking about. He kept hiding from girls until they got to a cafe where both of them ordered separate beverages, and Kawafuji told Honda to stop hiding because he didn't give a shit if other people knew about their friendship. Honda was amazed by the pure heart of his only friend, but what he didn't know is that Kawafuji was actually the reason that he became scared of girls and had a screwed up personality. Because when they were both still in middle school, Kawafuji's heart was broken when the girl that he loved so much asked him to help her deliver a love letter to Honda instead. So to get his payback, Kawafuji told Honda that the girl was spreading lies about his millimeter Peter, and before he could tell him that it was just a joke, Honda had convinced himself that all girls were evil. At school the next day, Honda overheard some girls talking about a cute poem that they bought from him in the park, but bro didn't have the balls to tell them that it wasn't actually him they had met. The girls placed the poem on the board and Honda cringed because of how terrible it was, but his fanboys felt like there was something off about the writing style so they decided to investigate the matter. They went to the park to see if he would show up, but when they saw a lookalike trying to sell poems by pretending that he was Honda, Akane got angry and quickly punched the imposter in the face. Ryo started slapping the fool and Aizawa grabbed a pair of scissors to chop his stupid hair off until he confessed that he was just an overly obsessed Honda cosplayer whose real name was Kei. Kei said that he was Honda's biggest fan which was why he had devoted his life to learning everything about him including the way he walked, talked and made his artwork. While they were still talking, two girls walked up to Kei thinking that he was the real Honda, and they told him to ditch his stupid friends at the park and have a steamy threesome with them instead. Seconds later an entire squad of girls arrived at the park to get a taste of fake Honda and when Kei couldn't take it anymore, he took off his mask revealing his ugly ass face and beaver teeth. The girls walked away when they realized that he was just a fraud. But all the guys started crying because it was so pathetic watching Kay and his fanboy dreams crumble to the ground so quickly. They took him back to their school so that he could apologize. But when they walked into the class Kay saw a note on the board from Honda telling him to focus on his useless life instead of trying so hard to imitate other people. But after crying his heart out like a loser, Kay said that he was going to change his strategy by using braces to fix up his beaver teeth so that he could look even more like Honda. Meanwhile, outside the classroom two senior girls were about to jump on Honda's anaconda when they noticed him collecting a gift from a smoking hot woman who they assumed was his girlfriend. They took a picture of both of them and posted it on Twitter, and soon enough, all the girls at school were hating on Honda for quitting his playboy ways to follow an older lady instead. When he got back to class Honda noticed that his desk had a strange writing on it. But when Aizawa and the others came over to check it out later, they realized that it was a suicide message from one of his fangirls. And at that moment, a guy walked in telling them that Miyoko was about to jump down from the highest floor of the building. So all the students rushed out to try and convince her not to kill herself over Honda. However, Miyoko went on to sing a song about how her entire life changed the day that Honda gave her a new eraser and that her grades were no longer good because all she could ever think about was his handsome face. But now that Honda had betrayed her to be with another woman, Miyoko no longer felt the need to live anymore, and she said that she was going to offer her life as a sacrifice to the Honda gods. What? Just as she was about to make the jump, Miyoko noticed that Honda was standing right behind her, and even though he had no idea what the heck was going on, Miyoko just stood there waiting for him to apologize. Honda talked to his desk like it was a real person, telling it not to feel bad about what happened and that nothing could ever replace it. But Miyoko thought that he was talking to her instead so she fell down crying and decided to stay alive. Her friends came to hug her for making the right choice, and while she was crying by the fountain later that day, 
Honda's supposed girlfriend walked up to Miyoko asking her for the venue of the PTA meeting. It was then that Miyoko realized that the smoking hot lady was actually Honda's mother, so she ran over to tell all the other fangirls. While Honda was stuck in a meeting with his teacher and his mom, they advised him to socialize more with the people in his class, but no matter how hard Honda tried, his classmates thought that he was too perfect for them and so they all responded in a weird way. With no other option left, he decided to become friendly with Kondo, and although he sounded like a total creep, Kondo still responded nicely to him, so Honda went back home feeling like he had won a Nobel Prize. After a short holiday school was back in session, and the vice principal scolded two students for roaming around the school grounds, but the girls said that he was trying to peek at their turkey slices instead. At that moment, the student body president Miss Sawako suddenly appeared and she threatened to expose the vice principal for having an OnlyFans account, so the old man just walked away without saying another word. The girls called Sawako their hero, giving her gifts to show their appreciation and Sawako felt proud that she could be a role model to the girls in their school but she got pissed when she saw Honda passing by with his crew. Sawako believed that all men were scum, and she hated the fact that Honda was able to easily grab the attention of all her female followers, so she made plans to take him down for good. At the next student body meeting, Sawako invited two senior students who were known for being the school's baddest, and she told them to seduce Honda until the fool begged them for mercy. The ladies accepted her challenge but just as they were about to pounce on him, Honda stopped them halfway saying that should focus on having healthy bodies rather than trying to eat the meat off his bone. And although he was just actually talking to some stray cats, Honda's words made the girls give up their stripper ways forever, and they went back to Sawako telling her that they couldn't go on with the mission anymore. Furious with the ladies, Sawako ordered her council members to capture Honda, and when he arrived she told him that as punishment for stealing all her followers he would wear a girl's uniform for the rest of the year. However, Honda didn't have a clue about what she was saying and he wondered how he got himself into this mess, but the creepy student body vice president told him to just chill out and wear the cute skirt. Not wanting to be mocked by the whole school, Honda ran away from Sawako and her team of freaks but they kept on chasing him round the hallway with their skirts of masculine doom. They blocked him on all sides and Honda was tackled down by the vice president causing him to trip on the stairs and fall directly on Sawako like a scene from a love story. When she woke up, Sawako was so disgusted to see herself sitting on Honda's body but when her girls said that Honda had practically saved her from having a concussion, she realized that she actually had feelings for the loser. She punched the vice president for showing his package in public before walking away with her friends. But when Aizawa arrived to save Honda, he realized that their precious male figure had lost most of his memories. Ryo and Akane were shocked to see Honda walking like a princess in the hallway so Aizawa told them that he had lost part of his memories and would get back to normal after a week's time. When he overheard their conversation Honda told the guys not to worry about his condition because there was nothing they could do about it, and he said that all he could remember was that he was the most popular kid in school. Akane started crying when he realized that his humble mentor was slowly turning into a cocky show-off, so Aizawa suggested that they find a way to speed up the recovery process for his memory loss. Honda put his rising skills to the test by flirting with different girls in the hallway, but the ladies quickly lost interest when he agreed to kiss them, saying that the real Honda would have rejected their offer instead. Miyoko wanted some free smooches as well but Honda was creeped out by her ugly face, and after reading different textbooks, Aizawa said that the best way to reverse Honda's amnesia was to whack him on the head with a sledgehammer. After he had escaped from Miyoko, Honda thought about how being popular wasn't really a good thing because his life was way more miserable compared to the time when nobody gave a shit about him. However, while he was still thinking about the good old days, Akane appeared behind Honda and almost smashed him to the ground with his hammer, saying that it was the only way to make things go back to the way they were. Honda quickly ran away from the freak but then Aizawa and Ryo started chasing him around with their hammers as well, until he was cornered on all sides with nowhere else to go. Honda started hearing different voices in his head saying that everybody hated him, but before Aizawa and the others could crack his head open like a walnut, he tripped and fell down the stairs just like earlier. When he finally got back up, Honda's memories were restored and because he thought that everyone in school was out to kill him, he stared at Aizawa and the others with an evil smile before walking away. Because he was worried that Honda's school life was turning into a war zone, Kawafuji invited him to have some fun later, but Honda was forced to disguise himself like an ugly ass 
Ops Lady in order to stay hidden from his ops. One of Kawafuji's friends Heiskawa decided to tag along as well, and Honda introduced himself to the guys as Hanzawa so that he could keep his other identity a secret throughout the day. He told Kawafuji that he was scared of hanging out with someone that wasn't him but Kawafuji told him to loosen up and be free because he wanted him to make new friends and stop being a loner. Heiskawa wanted to get a particular award that could only be won by scoring perfect points in all three games of bowling darts and basketball, but Honda was scared because he hadn't played any of those games before. He tried helping out with bowling but Honda just made a fool of himself in front of everyone. So Kawafuji showed him how it was done by scoring three strikes in a row like a pro athlete. Moving on to the next sport, Honda really wanted to prove his worth to Heiskawa. So after Kawafuji flunked the game he redeemed himself by scoring three bullseyes in a row even with his dark shades on. And because he was good at basketball Heiskawa decided to handle the last game, scoring a three-point shot in just one try and winning the grand prize for being an expert in sports. Kawafuji went out to get some drinks and when he left, Heiskawa did his best to get along with Honda saying that he could lend him some comic books if he wanted, and Honda was happy to be friends with someone like him. However, a group of high school punks from the basketball team pushed Heiskawa to the ground and collected his special prize while Honda just stood there and watched his friend get bullied. Seeing that Kawafuji was nowhere to be found, Honda changed to his normal clothes and scared the shit out of the seniors that they just gave Heiskawa his prize back and walked away. Heiskawa was shocked that Honda would actually stand up for him like that, and when Kawafuji returned with the drinks he told him everything that happened just like it was some kind of superhero movie. Heiskawa had forgotten all about Hanzawa during the incident, so he told Kawafuji to give some of his comic books to her, even though he didn't know that Hanzawa and Honda were basically the same person. Meanwhile at the sports field, all of the athletes were training for a major league race, but none of them were as fast as the school's top runner Kotaro Higashiro who was also known as Dash. They all saw him as a hero for rejecting an offer to join the best school in the country on a sports scholarship. But no one knew that Dash had only stayed back so that he could get revenge on his archenemy Honda. Honda had defeated Dash in a race in middle school, and because he was a sore loser back then, Dash thought that Honda had cheated to win the game so he swore to get his revenge someday. But when Dash tried asking Honda for a rematch he chickened out at the last minute, and started crying like a big baby so K agreed to help him out by replacing Honda in the second race. But as soon as K put his mask on Dash activated his Crybaby V12 engine, sprinting across the track in a record-breaking 10 seconds and although he was grateful to K for helping out, Dash still wanted to race the real Honda. They tried scaring him into running by starting a fire in the hallway, but Honda just covered up his nose and avoided the smoke, so Dash's trainer told him to stop wasting his time trying to win a petty race against Honda. She said that his career as a pro athlete was way more important and that all of his friends would always be here to support him, so Dash decided to focus on taking his team to the Nationals instead. But when he saw Honda running back home like a comic book speedster, Dash forgot all about the promise he had made and he chased after him like his whole life depended on it. Dash was finally able to outrun him in a race, but when Honda suddenly changed his direction Dash realized that he was actually running away from something, and he got his cheeks clapped by a horny dog. The next day at school, Miyoko allowed her friend Sugumi to read her palm and after she was able to successfully predict her future, Sugumi began testing her skills on all the other students in class. However, she needed a real challenge to take her powers to the next level, so Sugumi met up with Aizawa and the others and asked them to help her arrange a palm reading session with Honda. The guys told her that Honda wasn't into that kind of stuff, but when he overheard their little convo, Honda decided to help out by sitting down on his desk and pretending to doze off so that she could read his palm. Sugumi took the hint and got straight to work but she was shocked when she read Honda's palm and discovered that he had no attribute of popularity or confidence in his aura. Instead she noticed that he was living a very sad and horrible life, but she lied to the guys saying that Honda was going to face life alone like a giga chad and conquer many problems. Asking her about his future, Sugumi said that he was going to have lots of children from different baby mamas just like an American rap artist, and the guys were happy to hear that Honda was going to have a superstar lifestyle. After the midterm was over, the class teacher Mr. Akeyama announced to the students that their exam results were out, and he also encouraged those that failed to study hard as there would be a makeup exam next week. After the announcement he began sharing their report cards and while most of the students were happy with the outcome of the results, Ryo and Akein were bummed out because they had flunked the test. When school was over, the boys decided to come up with a study plan to help Akein and Ryo pass the upcoming exam 
and Aizawa said their meeting place should be called the Honda Force Headquarters. Everyone was happy with the name except for Kondo, who said that it would be wrong to create a club about Honda without telling him about it, but the other guys just ignored his lame ass talk. Aizawa gave them his report card which showed that he ranked first in the midterm exam, and he promised to devote all his time in making sure that Ryo and Akane passed the makeup test. Seeing Aizawa's position, the other guys wondered what score Honda had gotten because they all thought he would rank first. But Aizawa told them that Honda might have failed some questions on purpose just to avoid the attention. The boys were determined to do their best to make Honda proud, and on the day of the exam all the students taking the makeup test were told to assemble in the classroom so Dash and Kay joined them as well. As for the reason why both of them had failed their exams, Dash was more interested in running than his grades, while Kay was so stupid that he wrote down Honda's name on the answer sheet instead of his own. Kay wanted to sit on Honda's chair so that he could experience what it felt like to be the real Honda but Dash wanted to sit there as well, and they all started arguing about who deserved to have the chair. Akane and Ryo stepped in to stop either of them from sitting on the chair saying that it belonged only to the real Honda, but while they were still fighting, Honda shocked everyone by walking into the classroom to take the makeup exam. Mr. Akeawa told everyone to take their seats but Ryo, and the others were shocked that Honda of all people would write a makeup test because they naturally thought that he was the smartest guy in class. However, Honda was a dumbass like the rest of them, because he had forgotten to write down his name on the question paper during the first exam, which was why Mr. Akeawa forced him to take another one. When the makeup exam began, Honda started making scratching noises with his pencil almost as if he was drawing rather than writing, and this drew the attention of the other students who immediately started copying him. They got so obsessed trying to make the same noise with their pencils that Akane and the others started filling the answers so quickly, not caring if it was right or wrong, just so they could be like Honda. When the time was up, everyone submitted their papers and left the classroom, so Aizawa met up with Ryo and Akane asking them how the test had gone and they told him that it was great because Honda was there to support them. The test results came out the following day with both Akane and Ryo getting good scores, and they thanked Aizawa for his help but he told them that Honda was the one who deserved the credit. Kondo asked why he said that, and Aizawa told them that Honda had intentionally flunked the first exam so that he could be around to inspire others who had actually failed. Meanwhile at the school library, Kasumi was a loner who also had a crush on Honda, and although most students had stopped visiting the library, Kasumi didn't care because Honda was the only one she really wanted to see. Due to the lack of interest among students, the school allocated a smaller budget to the library, but Kasumi bought some romance novels with her own money and switched the front cover with an artwork title to trick Honda into borrowing the book. Fortunately, her plan worked as Honda borrowed the book thinking that it would improve his drawing skills, and after he left Aizawa, and the others walked into the library hoping to find him there. B they decided to borrow some books as well but while they were still searching, Akane accidentally knocked down some of the books that Kasumi had bought for Honda, causing her to freak out and yell at him. Seeing how protective she was about the books, Ryo concluded that Kasumi had specifically bought romance novels to make Honda fall in love with her and she started yapping about a fantasy world where Honda was her Prince Charming. In order to improve the library so that Honda could visit often and fall in love with her, Ryo, and the guys decided to help Kasumi by collecting various genres of books to fill the place up and make it more attractive. When the students heard about the new Gen Z library they all rushed inside to check it out and Kasumi was flooded with more orders than ever before. But Honda could no longer visit because the place had become so crowded. Later that day, when Honda came to return the book he borrowed he told Kasumi that the book cover didn't quite match what was written inside but she asked him if he found the book interesting. To her surprise, Honda said that he was impressed by the passion towards her job, and Kasumi's body began to sparkle because this meant that he had finally noticed all of the hard work she had done. However, she felt guilty for switching the covers on the book so Kasumi said that she would order books for everyone in school aside from him but Honda thought that she had just banned him from the library for life. When he told his friend what happened, Kawafuji said that he was dumb as f for not realizing that Kasumi was actually crushing on him, but he told him not to worry about it because the girl was ugly anyways. Later that day, Kawafuji tried convincing him to follow the rest of his classmates on a field trip saying that it would be an amazing opportunity for him to meet new people and make friends. Honda agreed to tag along. But then a group of students from another high school were arguing on how to spend their vacation, so the most popular guy in their class Ikemiya said that they should go on a field trip as well. 
On the train ride Rio brought out the pack of sweets he had carried along and he decided to share it among the students, telling them to take one and pass it on to the next person. When it was Honda's turn, he decided to take one as well and all the students were surprised that he was going along with the game. But when he noticed all the eyes staring at him Honda quickly spat out the candy. While they all wondered what made him change his mind, three students from Shiro High School walked into their cabin, so Akane got up and blocked their path saying that they should all get lost. The buff guy in the group Jimoto told him to get out of their way, and while they were talking, Honda's candy slipped and landed on Jimoto's hair, causing him to get angry and almost pound Honda with his fists. However, Ikamiya walked in to stop him from attacking Honda and he apologized to all of them for causing so much trouble, which made all the girls blush and giggle because of how charming he was. Asking who the pretty boy was, Aizawa told Akane that Ikamiya was the most popular student at the Shiro High School, and that just like Honda, he was considered the king of their school. When they arrived at the site of the field trip, the students were told to tour the place and return before curfew, and along the way Honda and his classmates came across a fortune teller. They decided to pay a small fee to know what the future had in store for them, and everyone was eager to know what Honda's fortune said, but then they were rudely interrupted by the students from Shiro High. They wanted to make Honda look inferior in front of Ikamiya, and they succeeded in this as Ikamiya's fortune slip had all the blessings in the world. But unknown to the other students this was all planned by his rotten classmates. Later that night, all the students retired to their rooms to sleep, with Honda and his friends having a room to themselves. But while they were asleep they noticed that something fell in through the window. Turning on the lights, they were shocked to see that it was a creepy doll, and Akane was convinced that Ikamiya and his group were behind this, so he suggested that they teach them a hard lesson. But to their surprise, Honda was fast asleep so they decided to follow his example and go back to bed, concluding that he would have wanted them to remain calm in situations like this. The next morning, the students continued their tour of the island, and Honda came across a group of hopeless romantic girls being led by Ikamiya, and he decided to follow them for no reason. The girls begged Ikamiya to allow them to take a photo with him and Mr. Handsome agreed, but when it was finally Honda's turn, Ikamiya gave him a costume to wear claiming that it was a way to make the event more fun. But unknown to him while they were busy taking photos, Ikamiya secretly stuck a piece of candy on Honda's hair as a way of paying him back for what he did to Jimoto on the train. So when it was time for him to take off the costume, Honda found it very difficult because the candy had glued his hair together with the fabric. But luckily Kondo arrived to help him out. Later that night, Honda escorted Kondo to the gift shop to get a present for his crush. But when he spotted Ikamiya's crew downstairs, he quickly tried warning Honda but the dumbass had already vanished. While looking at the cool items in the gift shop, Honda came across a stylish pen and wanted to get one for himself. But it fell under the table and when he tried getting it out his hand got stuck like in a Mia Khalifa movie. As he struggled to pull his arm out, Jimoto and his guys noticed this so they helped him. And Honda got up to thank them but Kondo quickly pushed him away before they realized who he was. However, Ikamiya's crew were confused with what had just happened and when they asked Kondo if he had seen Honda, he pointed at a random dude from afar to make them leave the gift shop. Then he rushed towards Honda who was still trying to recover and apologized for pushing him to the floor. But when Kondo saw Kamichi walking towards them he quickly covered Honda's face with a trash bag. Kamichi warned Kondo not to get in the way of Ikamiya and his plans. But Kondo tried telling him that Honda wasn't actually a bad person and that what happened in the train was just a mistake. However Kamichi just laughed at his silly words, and he said that he couldn't wait to see who would emerge victorious in terms of popularity between Ikamiya and their useless Honda. The next day, Ikamiya met up with Honda and asked him if he ever got tired of living up to people's expectations, but Honda said that he didn't have any idea what he was talking about. Regardless of this, Ikamiya stretched his hands towards him asking if they could be friends, but Honda said that it would be weird if he became friends with someone as popular as him and that he already had great friends in his class. His words made Ikamiya realize that he had people who cared about him all along but had always seen them as inferior, and so he apologized for treating them like subjects rather than his true companions. However Kamichi wasn't happy that Ikamiya was backing out of the fight, so he decided to take matters into his own hands. But as he ran forward to attack Honda Kondo bitch slapped him in the face. Ikamiya quickly stepped in to apologize for his friend's behavior, and he said that there would be no more rivalry between both of their schools. But nobody noticed that Honda was literally floating face down on the lake, 
Back at their school, the board had just denied Mr. Akeyama from ever doing dissections on frogs in the biology practical class due to all the complaints they had received from parents. Annoyed with the decision, he met with Honda and Aizawa at the hallway and tried persuading them to collect signatures from students in order to bring back the dissection part of the practicals. Akeyama was sure that Honda's popularity would help change the minds of the students, and even though Honda didn't quite like the dissections as well, he wasn't brave enough to say no to his teacher. When they got to the classroom, Aizawa stood in front of the class to address the students and he told them the importance of taking part in the frog dissection. But the class was divided as many students still didn't like the idea. They called on Honda to hear his opinion and in order not to disappoint Mr. Akeyama, he told them that he was going to take part in the dissection practical so they all signed the petition to bring back the dissection program. On the day of the dissection Mr. Akeyama was so happy that he decided to give Honda a hug to show his appreciation. But Honda's frog slipped out from his hands resulting in a minor accident. Suddenly, all the frogs started escaping from their jars and they leaped around the classroom causing the students to freak out and run for safety, and then the teacher noticed that Akane was bleeding. However, Akane told everyone to listen closely as Honda began to speak like he had been possessed by a frog saying that the dissection was a very cruel thing to perform on a bunch of innocent frogs. Touched by his words, Akeyama and his students released the frogs back into the river, and while they were on the field they collected flowers for a herbarium preparation instead. Akeyama realized that he had been making a mistake all along as he wanted the students to learn kindness through the art of dissection but they were able to learn it on their own without harming the frogs. Honda regained consciousness at the clinic and when school was over he walked back home. But Aizawa decided to follow him around secretly in order to make sure he got home safely. However, after a few minutes Honda suddenly ran off which made Aizawa believe that someone was stalking him, even though he was literally the one following him around from the shadows. At the Honda Force headquarters, Aizawa told the others about his suspicions and they came up with a strategy to catch whoever it was that was actually stalking Honda. So when school was over the next day, they split themselves into two groups, with each one secretly hiding along the routes that lead to Honda's house so that they could trap the culprit on all sides. Fortunately for Aizawa and Kondo, Honda took the road they were covering so they secretly followed, but Kondo suggested they walk with him instead so as not to be mistaken for the stalkers themselves. However, Aizawa told him that the Honda force operated from the shadows, but while they were arguing about it, they heard a sound in the bushes and immediately thought that it was the stalker. But just as they were about to attack, Miyoko got out of the bush and Kondo said that she was the stalker because of how shady she looked, but Aizawa told him that she was helping them to look after Honda as well. He said that Miyoko went by the name Eraser now because she was taking care of girls who were too obsessed with Honda and making them disappear forever like an eraser. Kasumi was on her way to Honda's house to give him some new romance novels that she had ordered, but when Miyoko noticed this she quickly trapped her using her cowgirl lasso. Meanwhile Yuki and Aizawa kept following Honda, but they soon lost track of him as he ran as fast as he could, so Aizawa immediately used his hand to blow a whistle signaling Dash to chase after him. But despite his speed, Dash was still unable to catch up to him, so he came back to give them the bad news. And while they were trying to figure out where Honda was, Ryo and Akane joined them looking all jacked up. Asking them what happened, the guys told Aizawa that they had been tricked by the stalker who locked them up in a dog cage and allowed an angry mutt to chew them up like toys. Miyoko joined them and while they were thinking of a better strategy, Honda tried to jump the fence but was shocked to see them on the other side as he thought that they had given up already. But instead of running this time around, Honda stood his ground and he shouted at them to stop following him around like a bunch of creeps, as he was already late to meet the only friend that he ever had. Hondo was shocked with this statement and he realized that they were the actual stalkers, but Aizawa was still delusional and he urged the rest of them to keep searching until they had found the real stalker. Later that day, Kondo noticed that everyone was gossiping about him and this made him feel very insecure so he went to meet Ryo for help in improving his self-esteem. Ryo invited him to have fun with some of the girls there, but Yuki wasn't interested and he sat down to read his favorite book instead. But while he was reading he noticed a letter on his table with a heart-shaped sticker on it. Kondo immediately concluded that it was a love letter and when he opened it, he saw that it was from a girl named Maki who said that he should meet her behind the gym after school. Kondo began to wonder if it was a real love letter or just a prank, but when he met Akane about it, the moron said that it was a challenge and that he should be ready to fight for his life like a man. But when Aizawa read the letter, he said that it was actually a love letter, because Maki was not the type of person to play pranks on people. 
but that she was just a 5 out of 10 at most in terms of beauty. Ryo told Kondo to celebrate because it was going to be the biggest day of his life and he helped him style his hair to look good, while Aizawa suggested that he should get the girl some flowers to make things romantic. Everyone kept staring at Kondo, and he thought that he was becoming popular because of the Honda Force, so he happily set out to meet his future girlfriend at the back of the gym. However, when he got to the spot, Maki said to his face that he was just an average student, and that he should stop pretending like he was part of the Honda Force because no girl would ever love him. Her confession felt like an arrow to the chest causing Kondo's heart to shut down completely, so his friends quickly surrounded him doing all that they could to cheer him up and make him forget about Maki. But to their surprise, Kondo calmly said he always knew it would end this way, because there was no chance in hell that an average student like him could end up with someone as hot as Maki. He tried maintaining his composure, but eventually lost control and ran away. And when his friends realized that he wasn't okay they quickly chased after him. While thinking about leaving the Honda Force, he bumped into Honda, who remembered him as the guy that had knocked him down during the field trip. But Kondo noticed the flowers he was holding and he asked him what he planned on doing with them. Honda replied saying that he was going to harass people with them. But Kondo knew that he was just trying to act tough, so he gave him a gift card to apologize for attacking him the other day. He continued walking and met up with his friends, who were happy to see him back to his happy self. But what they didn't know is that it was Honda's weird and shy nature that made Kondo feel more secure about himself. However, when Honda opened the card that Kondo gave him he accidentally smudged the letters on the page which made it spell out the word jackass, and Honda hated Kondo even more for tricking him. In another part of school, a group of artistic guys known as the Hentai Comic Club spent all of their time drawing mangas of cute girls, but they were never able to sell any copies of their books. Aizawa arrived at the studio to tell the boys that because their club was the most useless creation in the entire school, they were no longer going to receive funding from the student council. Asking Aizawa why their precious club was being terminated, he told them that it was because the club hadn't been able to make any money for the school while pointing to a stack of unsold manga that had been sitting around for ages. The guys said that it wasn't their fault people didn't like to read manga, so Aizawa advised them to make one about Honda since he was the most popular guy in school, although they would need to get his permission first. They were so excited by his suggestion that they kicked him out and sat down to discuss how to go on with the plan. But then they remembered that it was against their club rules to draw anything except for cute girls. The fat guy in the group suggested that they should turn Honda into a cute girl and see if it would work. But they found it difficult to create an exact character design of Honda as he was always alone and had no friends. So the club president Neo proposed that each of them interview Honda separately and come up with their own unique ideas, after which they would compare all three mangas and choose the best one to get published. Neo went to the hallway where Honda was walking alone. And in order to expose his true nature Neo pulled out a doll dressed up in a bikini, and he tried using it to seduce Honda. Confused by the puppet show, Honda said that the doll looked beautiful, but when Neo tried making him take the doll's skirt off, Honda used his napkin to cover her up saying that all women deserve to be treated with respect. When he heard Honda say those words, Neo felt guilty for treating his doll like a cheap hoe and he apologized to her promising that he would create a decent manga of Honda to honor his kindness. After a week passed, the club members gathered to present their work to each other, but when Fat Joe revealed his manga the others were shocked to see his version of female Honda with her plot armor wide open. Neo was pissed to see Honda's pure nature tainted by his hentai images so he punched Captain Eye Patch to the ground, but because he wanted them to accept his story, Daddy Diabetes punched Neo in the face as well. The smallest guy in the club Takoyaki interrupted their argument by showing them his own version of the comic which was about an intergalactic love story. But Neo also hated his idea and punched him down as well. He told them to forget about jiggly body parts for once and focus on the decency of human life. But plus size and Takoyaki accused Neo of trying to bend the rules of their precious club. He apologized for turning his back on their hentai tradition but Neo told them to give other writing styles a try and he showed them his version of the comic portraying Honda as a kind character with an uplifting backstory. Dazzled by the brilliance of his work, the others agreed that Neo's version was the best, but then they accidentally dropped it together with the old mangas, which Honda later came to collect as part of the recyclable trash. When the guys met Aizawa in the hallway, they were so excited to show him what they had come up with, but to their surprise the Honda comic book wasn't on the table and had been thrown out with the rest of the old trash. Terrified that their manga was gone forever, they tried running after the garbage truck to retrieve it. And when Honda overheard their conversation, 
he realized he was the one who had mistakenly thrown their artwork away. Before the guys could even go far they got tired of running and dropped to the ground. But just then, someone breezed past them at top speed, and they were shocked to see that it was Honda who was chasing after the truck. He managed to make the vehicle come back, and as the boys went through all the papers to find their manga, some sheets flew into the air which contained some of their prototype manga. Honda caught one of them that Professor Piggy had made and when he looked at it, his eyes almost popped out of their sockets to see the page featuring a female version of himself dripping in a sexy plot armor. A few months passed and it was almost time for the next school festival, so the council president decided to kick off the celebration by changing the name of the occasion to the Honda Festival. However, the students weren't exactly happy with this name change and although she tried bringing up different excuses, they all knew that Sawako was only doing all this to impress her crush Honda. Aizawa suggested to his classmates that they do everything they could to win the best award at the festival, and while Ryo said that they dress up as maids, Akane said that they should host a boxing tournament instead. However, the girls wanted to perform Romeo and Juliet and Rio quickly agreed to this because he had always wanted to dress up as Juliet since he was a child and Kondo wondered why he would want such a thing. Since they couldn't settle on an idea, they left the final decision to Honda because he was their class rep and gave him three options to choose from. The pressure started to give Honda a headache and when Kondo noticed this he tried helping out by suggesting that they add one more option. But this only made Honda more confused. Honda accidentally blurted out that he wanted the game where boys dressed up as girls, and the class girls became super excited. But when he realized his mistake Honda panicked and ran for his dear life. As he sat by the stairs thinking about what to do, Sawako met him and offered him some advice, telling him to be more of a dictator and choose what he wanted without worrying about what others thought. However, Honda was more confused by her new hairstyle but she asked him to help with the murals for the festival using his artistic skills and Honda agreed to work his ass off for free. Before leaving Sawako reminded him to have a firm will, and with a newfound determination he marched back to his class with his arms wide open, only to find the room empty as everyone had left. Aizawa said that the class had made their decision without him and the next day when Honda wanted to help out, he told him to just sit down and chill but Honda thought that they just wanted him out of the way. His suspicions were confirmed when his classmates left him alone at school, and Honda was pissed off that none of them had tried to wake him up, and while he was staring at a cat outside a group of thugs tried to attack him. Luckily the Honda force showed up to protect him and the next day when roles for the play were assigned, Ryo argued that he wanted to be Juliet, but Aizawa said that Akane should do it because he had more junk in the trunk. Kondo noticed that he had been given the role of a commoner with no dialogue. And when Honda asked about his role Aizawa told him to sit and watch because they had planned something very special for him. The girls were ready to sacrifice pieces of their hair to make a wig for Honda's character while the boys were busy trying to act like him but Honda was sad that he couldn't have fun with his classmates. The festival had finally arrived and while Kawafuji was helping out in the artwork section, he and Keisukawa decided to check out what Honda's class was doing and they ordered some drinks as they settled in to watch the play. The drama began with Ryo playing Romeo while Akane took on the role of Juliet, and as the both of them embraced, the audience realized that Romeo was about to get crushed by Juliet's large body. However, they joined in the fun with musicals and as Romeo was spun in the air, King Lear appeared looking all troubled by the chaos and he said some wise words, which made Juliet drop Romeo and drink a bottle of poison. When Romeo woke up, he was heartbroken to see the love of his life dead and though the audience urged him to focus on healing his heart, Romeo refused to listen to their words and he decided to die with her. But just then, things took a turn as Othello from another story crossed into the wrong universe and interrupted the scene, altering reality and causing Juliet to come back to life while holding Romeo back. However, Queen Elizabeth appeared to calm everyone down and Kawafuji was shocked to see that it was Honda who was given the role of the Imperial Leader of England. Meanwhile, Honda wondered what he was doing up there especially since he wasn't given any lines to say at all, and he became more embarrassed when he noticed that Kawafuji was watching him. He felt like the earth should open up and swallow him and when he couldn't take it anyone, Honda got up and ran off the stage with his fans wildly following behind him. While the Honda force was taking a break outside, some students came to tell them that Honda was in trouble as thugs from Kuro High were all over the place looking for him, but the dumbass was busy snacking in a quiet corner. The gangsters went around asking everyone for Honda's whereabouts, and just when they thought they had found him the thugs were shocked to see that it was just his lookalike, and then many Honda clones started showing up from nowhere. 
Their leader Rai managed to catch Kay and said that he should tell them where Honda was or they would chop his balls off. But Kay said that nothing would ever make him betray Honda. However, while he was still talking, Dash arrived and stupidly revealed that Honda was in the 7th grade classroom so Rai and the other thugs quickly rushed over to find him. On their way there, they met up with Sugumi who warned them that something terrible was coming their way. And after using her lens to look into Rai's palm she said that his entire life was going to be filled with darkness. Scared by her creepy predictions, the guys quickly ran away but when Miyoko and Kasumi heard that a bunch of thugs were after Honda, they decided to join forces to defeat them. At the same time, Kei met up with Aizawa and the others to warn them that Rai and his group of savages had discovered Honda's location, and he said that they should hurry if they really wanted to save him. Ikemiya and his crew also arrived at the festival, and they looked forward to seeing the Romeo and Juliet show. But backstage Honda was thinking of other ways to improve his role rather than just sitting down in an old lady's costume. Rai and his gangsters arrived looking for Honda but couldn't find him anywhere because he was hiding inside the castle prop. And when he heard their voices he thought the play had started and began to rehearse his lines. The thugs sat down waiting for Honda to show up but when Ikemiya and his crew arrived, things got so tense that Jimoto lost control and punched one of the guys in the face causing everyone to start fighting. Meanwhile, Honda covered his ears waiting for the signal to come out, and when Aizawa and the others barged into the room causing a loud bang, Honda broke out of his fake castle ordering everyone to stop fighting. However, he went back inside feeling shy for coming out too soon, and everyone felt bad about what had happened so Rai and his guys said that they had actually come to respect Honda and not hurt him, because ever since he had scared the shit out of them in front of Akane's house, Rai and his crew no longer had the courage to rule the streets like before, so they all decided to surrender to Honda instead. Ikemiya and his guys also apologized for picking a fight with them for no reason. But as they were talking they noticed that Rai was lying lifeless on the ground because Miyoko and her new protege had knocked him out. Later that night as the festival came to an end, Sawako thanked everyone for participating and making it a memorable experience, and she said that it was time to give out the awards. She started with the award for best school club which went to Neo, and the guys from the hentai comic club for selling 5,000 copies of their Honda manga in a single day. When it was time to announce the award for best class performance, everyone was eager to hear which class would get the award, and Sawako said that Honda's class had won it for their Romeo and Juliet drama. As the class rep Honda was asked to step forward to collect the award, but he was so scared of everyone humiliating him for no reason that he started trembling when he got up to the stage. But just as he was about to receive the crown, Kawafuji appeared and demanded they give it to him instead, saying that his class deserved it more because their performance was way better. Sawako quickly placed the crown on Honda's head saying that it belonged to no one else but him, so Kawafuji told Honda to hand the crown over because he was the only true friend he had. Everyone in the crowd got pissed that he was trying to take the spotlight away from Honda so they began to throw things around and start a riot, causing Honda to think that they wanted to bully him off the stage. However, Kawafuji told him to take a closer look at the crowd and how people were actually cheering for him, and this made him realize that nobody had actually hated him from the start and that it was all in his mind. With this new outlook on life, Honda took off the crown saying that it actually belonged to everyone at the festival, and his words filled up the arena with so much light that it felt like night had turned into day. Sawako was impressed by Honda's humility and she revealed his grand prize which was a giant Honda parade float. But Honda was creeped out by how much everyone in school worshipped him. Aizawa and the others encouraged him to ride on the parade float but just when Honda was about to do it, he noticed that the parade float was on fire, and that he probably might have died if he took their advice. But everyone admired the parade float as it burned to the ground like a majestic phoenix, and the next day at school Honda was finally able to relate with his classmates and make some new friends. Set your heart ablaze, go beyond your limits, and watch this next video.